Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah, I have another jargon tutorial for you today. PFB or Pearl Front Back. Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah, I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you learn to knit the easy way. Yes, let's pearl front back today. And I have two methods for this. A lot of my things have two or three methods, but when I learned to do this, I read it in a book. And I possibly read it in a pattern as well. So I did what the book told me, I did what the pattern told me, and I did it wrong. But actually, I've been using this method for a very long time, and I find it actually works somewhat better. Uh, you can choose for yourself. I have Hannah's method, and I have the conventional method that a lot of other knitters use instead. You choose whichever you like. Okay, let's get straight to it. Let's pearl front back. Pearl front back gives you an increase in your knitting and you can do it either side of the knitting to give you a mirrored increasing too. So what I've got to show you is the two methods that I've used over my life and I will give you um, tips on which one to use and when. So, okay. Pearl front back is a simple stitch, it just feels a bit complicated. So you are going to knit into the front and the back of the stitch. It's that simple. Let's do this first in the more conventional way that I only learnt um, after I'd been doing the other way for a very long time. So we'll purl into the front like we normally do, but we don't drop that stitch off of the left hand needle. So that's the first step. The next step is to then move your right hand needle towards the back of the left hand needle and go into the back part of that stitch. That can feel a bit awkward, most definitely. Let me show you again. We move into the back of that stitch there. There it is, sitting there on the needle, and we move the stitch, the needle, into that stitch. Okay? And now we can drop it off of the needle. So we have knitted into the front, and the back of that stitch. I will show you that again. Okay, purl side, so the yarn's at the front. We're going to purl into the front just like you would normally. Then we're going to move the right hand needle into the back part of that stitch. There it is sitting, the back of that stitch is sitting there on the needle. And we purl into that part too. The yarn is still at the front. We're moving the same the yarn in the same way as we did for a conventional pearl stitch, and now we can drop the pre the uh, stitch from the previous row off of the left hand needle. So there you go. That is pearl front back. Now I'm going to just move along the row here and show you how I was doing it, and this may well be how you were doing it as well because I learned from a book and it wasn't explained very well. So this is what I ended up doing. Okay, so I purled into the front and then I thought, well, there's the back of the stitch. I can see it right here. So I purled into the back of the stitch, but I approached it from the front. So that just gives you a slightly different look and I'll show you it on the other side. And sometimes you want that different look. So... Here we are. If you are using those two different stitches, here is the pearl front back, which is the more conventional way. That's the first way I showed you. And it's pretty well hidden. It's not seen that much. All you can see is this line of stitches just sloping up there. That's the stitches that we do before we do the pearl front back. And then those stitches are moving vertically up here. Now this side is more obvious and it's slightly looser. You can see that there's a slight gap here because you're stretching the stitch a bit more. And you can see this bar much more easily. Now I've done that actually on purpose because I want to see that bar. On a neckline maybe, you may want to see this um, 
because it just shows how very obvious it is that you are increasing and you will see on jumpers, on necklines, on cardigans, on armholes sometimes where the sleeve meets the main body of the jumper that you want it to be obvious, that you want it to be seen because it's a feature of the knitting. So just pick and choose what you want to. This is also known as a bar increase but it's not quite so obvious that it's happening. I've shown, I'm going to show you here that you can see this is the PFB, the more conventional way, on the left and the right hand side of the row. And you can see that it's there, it's just not quite so obvious as it is here for the PFB where I've done it in a different way. All right, so which method would you like to use? <laughs> So Hannah's PFB or a conventional PFB, whichever you like. I have all of these jargon tutorials, obviously in the knitting jargon playlist here. And if you'd like to, click the link in the description below and sign up to receive a PDF download, which you can keep on your smartphone, your tablet, your computer. And all you have to do is click on any of the jargon tutorials that you'd like to see, and it will send you straight to the video. No need to go into Google and look it up. It likely will be straight there and ready and waiting for you. Knitting abbreviations can be a real bane when you're knitting, can be so annoying. So let's make knitting easier. If it's all in one place, then it's it means that you just have an easier ride when you're going through a pattern. Thanks so much for joining me today. Do, do hit subscribe and click on the little bell so that you get notifications whenever I release a new video. That's every Tuesday, every week. I do hope I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Happy knitting.